Hello everyone! A few weeks ago I dropped this demo reel and I was blown away by how many of you wanted the breakdown of the look I created. Well, today is the day. I'm taking you through the entire process, step by step. But here is a twist. This time I'm doing it using only DaVinci Resolve's built-in tools, particularly the Film Look Creator. So there will be no LUTs, no third-party plugins like the Enhancer Pro, just pure Resolve Studio magic. Yet, the end result still has that rich, cinematic feel with beautiful color saturation, balance, contrast, and natural filmic touch. So, without further ado, let's dive in. As always, first let's go through our project settings. In the master settings, I've set the timeline resolution and video resolution to match the footage for optimal clarity. Moving on to color management, uh, we are using WG Resolve YRGB as our color signs. Uh, the timeline color space is set to WG White Gamut Intermediate and our output color space is REC 709 Gamma 2.4, a solid choice for a cinematic yet accurate final image. Now let's create our input and output CSD nodes uh, to properly map our image and ensure we are seeing it accurately uh, before we dive into grading. Today's footage came in REG 709 format, but I still want to transform it into WinGy White Gamut color space first before bringing it back to REG 709. Why? Because grading in a larger color space gives us more flexibility, smoother tonal transitions and also better control over color adjustments, uh, especially when pushing the grade. Now, let's create our output CSD to bring the image back to Reg 709. I'll use WG Resolve's tone mapping here and set the maximum output to 10,000 nits for optimal dynamic range. All right, we are ready to grade. Let's pick a strong hero shot and set up three nodes for primary grading. You know the drill, contrast, balance, and exposure. Let's get to it. We'll start with contrast. For this, I'll use the lift and gain wheels in the primaries panel. Lift acting as our contrast control and gain working like a pivot. As I make adjustments, uh, I'm keeping an eye on both the image and the waveform. Okay, let's check it. Good. Now let's bring the exposure down a bit. I like where this is landing, uh, but if you look at the waveform, the shadows are staying a little too close to zero. To fix this, I'll jump back to the contrast node, go into the curves tool and lift the shadows slightly. Here first, let's click and lock her skin tones to keep them protected. Then I'll make the adjustment. Let's check before and after. Perfect start. As for balance, looking at the vector scope, I don't see any major issues at this point. Our image already looks quite neutral. But instead in this note, I want to show you a simple trick that helps set up split toning right from the start. I actually picked this up from another colorist on YouTube, but unfortunately I cannot remember his name. But anyway, here is how it works. In the lift wheel, uh, we'll slightly increase the blue and green channels while reducing red. Don't worry about how it looks yet. Then in the gamma wheel, we'll do the opposite, bringing red up and pulling blue and gray down just a bit. And there we go. Let's check the before and after. See that subtle touch of split toning? It's a quick way to introduce a base tone without overcomplicating things. Try it on your own projects and see how it works for you. Now let's check how far we've come with the primer grading. Look at that. I love it. Now we can move on to the part I like the most, look development. As promised, today we are using DaVinci Resolve's Film Look Creator instead of the Enhancer Pro. So let's create our node and bring it in. First, I'll reset the default settings to start with a clean slate. For this footage, I want to introduce a Rochester film look, which as you may know, gives us a style similar to the iconic Kodak 2383 print profile. Adjust this to your taste. Uh, and we can also fine-tune the skin bias slider for a more balanced image. Next, let's enhance our split toning even further. 
right about here it looks good to me. I also like the fade effect here to soften the image and add a touch of atmosphere. Next, for a greenish tone, we can lower the tint slightly. And finally, let's bring in a bleach bypass effect for a more cinematic, contrasted look. You know what? Let's add a bit of bloom here as well for that soft, glowing highlight effect. Now, let's check the before and after. Awesome. Now, I'm really loving our look, but I want to fine-tune the colors a bit, especially her skin tone, since our adjustments have slightly shifted it. But before we jump into that, I want to take a moment to quickly address a question I get all the time. Where to find high-quality footage for practice? Here's a solution I found. For years, I've been personally using Artlist for this purpose. Every piece of music, sound effect, and footage you see in my YouTube videos comes from Artlist and their licensing covers me across all platforms and projects. Honestly, it's been a game changer for me and that's why I keep using it. I also rely on Motionary, especially for titles, templates, transitions and other graphic elements. You know, it just makes the whole post-production process smoother and more polished. So long story short, if you're looking for high quality assets for your own work, these are my two go-to sites and I genuinely recommend checking them out and seeing if they fit your needs as well. And if you decide to subscribe, you can use the links in the video description to get a discount and two months free. A nice little bonus for you. I hope this helps and as always, I appreciate you all being here. Now back to grading. To fine tune the colors, I'll create a parallel note and use the new color slice tool. Let's start with her skin. Checking on the vector scope, this is looking good. If you prefer a more saturated style, you can tweak the saturation here as well. Good. Next, I also want to refine her red outfit, giving it more density for a richer, more filmic look. And finally, I like adjusting the depth slider to get it exactly where I want. As a final touch, I'll add some soften and sharpen effect to enhance the overall texture and bring everything together. And there it is, our look is complete. We started with a solid base, developed a rich cinematic feel using only DaVinci Resolve Studio's built-in tools, and fine-tuned the details to make everything come together beautifully. I hope you found this breakdown helpful and maybe even picked up a few tricks to try in your own projects. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if there is anything else you'd like me to see in my future tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.